watch this. Two groups of protesters facing off against each other yesterday at the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. And at one point, both sides, the pro-Israel supporters and the pro-Palestinian supporters, started chanting this. All right, welcome back to Mocha Don is Right. I am Mocha Don, and tonight we're going to talk about um, protests that we can all support, like both sides of a protest, uh, the pro-Palestinian folks and the pro-Israeli folks uh, shouting FJB. You got to appreciate that. Uh, that's the kind of campus protests we need more of. What we need less of is the property damage and the destruction that goes on you know, unfortunately, the way that Congress has decided to deal with that is passing a completely unconstitutional um, anti, uh, anti-Semite, uh, anti-hate bill, I suppose they would call it, that, uh, that supposedly bans anti-Semitism. But what it does is it violates the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. You cannot ban speech. You cannot ban hate speech, and hate speech particularly is constitutionally protected under the First Amendment. So our brilliant Congress people have passed this unconstitutional bill, even though I, you know, I agree with the intentions of it. You just can't violate the First Amendment. It's about damn time. Uh, our Congress people and our executives learn you cannot violate the Constitution. Not now, not any time, not when we're under terrorist attack, not when we're at war, not when violent protests are erupting in campuses all over the country. There are no circumstances, none, where you can violate the Constitution. And it's about damn time the Supreme Court of the United States gets involved. Anyway, I was pleased to hear Glenn Beck agrees with me. The House of Representatives passed a major anti-Semitism bill on Wednesday, which would crack down on anti-Semitism on college campuses as protests rage nationwide. So you're now not saying that this is going to be uh, for everybody. This is just through the Department of Education. Legislation was opposed by 21 Republicans and 70 Democrats. The legislation seeks to make the Department of Education adopt the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism when enforcing the 1964 Civil Rights Act on college campuses. I had to look it up. What is the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism? Well, they define anti-Semitism as, and I'm quoting, a certain perception of Jews which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews. It also defines it as a heretical and physical manifestation of anti-Semitism and directed towards Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property, towards the Jewish community, institutions, and religious uh, facilities. Examples of anti-Semitism include calling for the harming of the Jewish people in the name of racial or extremist view of religion and accusing Jewish people of inventing and or exaggerating the Holocaust. The combat anti-Semitism movement hailed the passage as a momentous achievement, but said work remains to be done to get it through the Senate and President Joe Biden's desk. While we celebrate this milestone, our work is far from over. I'm, I, I'm absolutely on the same page as Glenn. He also points out that only 20 Republicans voted against this. Uh, gets down in Florida, had something to say about it, and voted against it. But the fact that only 20 Republican Congress people voted against this is, is despicable, and the Republican Party should be ashamed of itself. In addition to that, I guess Hakeem Jeffries supported this bill. Go figure. You think he might figure that maybe someday they can ban conservative speech? Because if you can ban speech you disagree with, then someone else can ban speech you agree with. Anyway, a little more from Glenn. 
Okay, so there there are the 20 Republicans uh, in the House that stood up. Florida Representative Matt Gates opposed the bill. Uh, he said this is a hate speech bill. Anti-Semitism is wrong, but the legislation is written without regard for the Constitution, common sense, or even common understanding of the meaning of the words. If this bill would pass, the gospel itself would meet the definition of anti-Semitism under the terms of this bill. Democratic lawmakers, including House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, has also called for the passage of the bill. The Countering Anti-Terrorism Act, uh, or Anti-Semitism Act. The bill would combat anti-Semitism through the appointment of a new presidential advisor that would be charged with implementing the White House's coordinated strategy in dealing with anti-Semitism. What could possibly go wrong here? The effort to crush anti-Semitism and hatred in any form is not a Democratic or Republican issue. It's an American issue that must be addressed in a bipartisan manner with a fierce urgency of now. Because after all, gang, say it with me, we've got to do something. Absolutely despicable. And then we also have the the basic idea that you just can't do it. You must protect the Constitution. The Constitution isn't some idea that other countries don't have. Every other country on the planet has some form of a constitution. The issue is is that we put teeth in ours. And we, you know, with the Second Amendment, for example. And we also have this uh, three branches of government that are in conflict and a bicameral House and Senate that are uh, in conflict and that operate differently. We have a myriad of anti-democratic processes from the Electoral College to the filibuster to the fact that every state, no matter how populated it is, only gets two senators. These anti-democratic provisions of our Constitution are designed to prevent the tyranny of the majority. And when things are popular, it's easy to pass this laws. A little bit more from Glenn. You know how I feel about anti-Semitism. You know how I feel about the Holocaust and the return of the Holocaust. I've been warning about it. I've been trying to prepare you for this time. What have I always said? The Constitution must rule. The Constitution must be our set of principles that we do not violate, no matter if it cuts your way or against you. This act, you would think that someone like me that is very supportive of the Jews in Israel would be all for. I am dead set against this, and you should be too. Something can be legally permissible and morally repulsive at the same time. Speech needs to be protected, not the stuff we all agree on, but the stuff we don't agree on. The only speech that needs protection is the speech that a lot of people, the majority, find absolutely abhorrent. Congress doesn't understand. You cannot legislate hatred away. You can't pass a bill. You know what happens? All you do is you create speakeasies of hate. They go into the closet. They go into a, another room where they can't be heard, and it just becomes a festering pool of hate that at some point will break out. The only one that can remove hatred from hearts is God. We can do our part. Does that mean that jerk protesters can prevent Jewish students from entering their own classroom? No, that's not speech. In the public square, and I mean that electronically as well, those who are standing up and quite honestly, spreading the lies about the Palestinians and Hamas, as much as it kills me to say it, I stand with them on freedom of speech only. The people who voted for this bill, I'm sure it was well intended, but they're misguided by human nature itself. Governments cannot fix human hearts. 
they should all be sent back to some remedial class on the principles of the Constitution of America, the importance of freedom of speech, the importance of not rushing in to do something because it's scary right now. No. Why is it this Congress can only pass the things that seemingly only hurt the strength of America and only cut across the Constitution? You just took away our Fourth Amendment right for warrants. You just took that away. You now just passed another bill that is bringing people who have escaped Gaza and are Palestinians. Remember, 97% of them in the latest poll hate America. About 70% of them were all for Hamas in the 80 percentile range of supporting October 7th. Congress, you just passed a bill that are bringing those people in to America and settling them here in America. What the hell is wrong with you? You live in the upside down world. I don't. I still live in the world where, the, uh, where America is all about protected rights. It's a dark day when only 20, per, only 20 people in Congress that are Republican will stand up against this bill. It is a dark, dark day. And now last, it's sad. You know, I agree completely with what Glenn has to say. So that's tonight. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We need your help. Small channel, please subscribe. That would really help us out. And you have a fantastic week. Get ready, stand by.